Hello Marvel Collectors, welcome back. We're at the Northeast Marvel Show. This is the 42nd annual Northeast Show in Meriden, Connecticut. So we're going to do a little lap here and check out what we can do. Ah, good old Meriden, Connecticut. It's located at about halfway between New York City and Boston, Massachusetts. And the first thing that you'll come to notice going to a Marvel show in the Northeast is the abundance of old school, old money collectible marbles. There were three million people living in New York at the turn of the century and seven and a half million by 1940. Since playing marbles was such a large pastime for children back then, it makes perfect sense that they're still being rediscovered and yanked out of dusty old attics and basements to this day. Making vintage marbles still relatively findable at estate sales, flea markets, and antique stores in this region. And some of the lucky marbles find their way to marble shows like this. What do we call this, Dave? Onion skin or? With, with mica. Oh, okay. Here's my handy checklist of things to bring if you're planning on going to a show. And the buying doesn't have to end when the doors close if you remember to grab a business card from your favorite vendors. And you can check Marble Show listings at any time online at marbleshows.com. Thank you, Dave. Oh, thank you. I told my daughter. Maybe I'll have one on her. I'll say, that's my marble. What is this? What do we have? Cyclone. Oh, yeah, that's a rare. Bob says it's worth more than what I got on it. That's terrific. Nice color. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never seen another one. <laughs> Except uh, I maybe. I certainly don't own one. But I've seen a I don't even think Bob Block owns one. <laughs> he probably sold more than no, we've he, ever seen. No, I'm rich and I picked rich? up this cyclone and I didn't get it all that cheap either. <laughs> right. That's insane. You got this today? Yeah, $80 over there. 80 it's like Christmas colors, right? With yeah. the gold and the red and blue. I like the pink in there. The pink kills me. You know, they were knocking down this house and this guy was pitching all this stuff from like right. an antique dealer. Right. I bought like all the cases. I didn't know anything. I brought them home. When I called my wife to have her Venmo me some money, she said it was insane spending $300 on marbles. So Turns out you probably made a good deal, right? It was, what a, real, did, it was did a really you, good deal. What did you find that you had? Uh-oh, you brought stuff. Yeah, here we go. What's your name? Sean Griffin. Sean Griffin. Let's all see right, what you got. All right, all right. I was trying to be careful. There's some stuff that I have not ID'd like that. Okay. And this wow. here, this here. That's a Peltier. And this is my favorite marble in the world right here. It's all right, a all right, swirly all right. Peltier. All right, That's an old Trilight. Retro Trilight. I know, all these were found. Oh, Christmas tree, right? Yeah, these are in mint. Are you kidding me? Awesome. There's a nice Superman. Mint, two of them. These were all mixed together in a collection, like three or four big, filled up the whole backseat of my Toyota Tundra. Holy cow. And I just bought, I bought, I got the whole collection for $300. You made out like a band. Oh, this is just a part of it. I, I got bet. West Virginia swirls for days. That's an alley. I think I got Red Raven. Uh, That's a pine needle. Pine needle. Yeah. And look at this. You might appreciate this. It's a little weird. Oh, it's two two colors. Looks huh? like a pine needle, kinda. It's got that. Yeah, it's a rainbow. Green. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a rainbow. But it's got extra green in it. That's yeah. nice. That is very unusual. Awesome. It's an old Christensen slag. Yep. Yeah. It's probably another one there. Yeah, these are mint, man. This is a yeah. Those are stupid. So I didn't. I thought they were serpents because they were so shiny. I yeah. Like, you know what? I I no. on Facebook and people were arguing about it. Yeah. No. These are. I bring them here. These are. Vintage. Vintage. Yeah. That's a sick marble. That, that's an acro. Is it? Okay. Acro. Alley. It's just disgusting. Though. That's like alley pistachio. This. This is a. It's Peltier. a pelt. It's not. A real good liberty, but it's a limit. All right, I got a rebel at home that I didn't bring. This? A little pine needle. Well, usually yeah. a pine needle, usually it would have adventure in it. All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. What do you got there for me? African trade beans. Oh, wow. 
These were produced in Africa? No, Germany. Oh, Germany. They were oh, these are mica. Are they these were mica? used to trade for gold. Okay. To the African tribes. Okay, here you go. All Private right, collection. embracing myself. Golden Rebel. Wow, that's a nice example. Freaking mint. It's just brutal. That's nice. That's nice. It's a bust, uh, swirled up MCR. These are some nice acros. Is that alley there? Yep. That's nice. These are all mint. Yeah, this is, like, this is my private collection. Oh, that's a nice alley. I don't know what that is, but I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clear base. Christian Sooner Pro. Oh, maybe the core for that. Different. Yeah, I think the core as well. Yeah, those are loud colors here. And these are for sale? Yeah. That's a sort of a twisted up vitro tiger eye. It's nice. A little different. Yeah, very different. Almost like a, I almost want to go almost fruit salad, but it's not quite there. Yeah, it's cool. That's a Vicor Jungle, I think it's called. This right here? Uh-huh. Not sure which car it came off of, but the nice radiator cap. Oh, wow. What we're looking at here is a super rare 1910s or 20s dog bone radiator cap. There's a thermometer in that central disc and the dog bones act as handles to screw and unscrew the cap. This particular piece has glass gear shifter like knobs on the end of the two bones and has an Indy 500 emblem engraved on the face. Maybe it was taken from one of those old pace cars from a race over 100 years ago. Vendors Neve and Tim Douglas had an endless spread of high-end, vintage machine-made marbles for sale to go along with their unique marble-related items. I couldn't help but notice this full gun case of bullseye agates and a few trays of old-school micas and slags. Yeah, that's actually uh, sub uh, sub okay. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool marble, yeah. This? Oh, that's not easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. We could trade. Dragon. Hey, it's Dick Belmont. Hi there. Yeah, Dick, and you're from Connecticut. Right? Absolutely. From and you're part of the Marvel Universe. Part of the Marvel uh, Universe, yes. I'm not sure what part. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all part of, like, part of the Marvel Universe. I like to think that I'm the exciting part, but uh, that that's remains right. to be seen, I guess. Okay, well, we're let's look at what you got. Sure. Look, so these are all from the run that we did uh, in August. Okay. This is, this is the famous DAS Dibs run. This is a pound. I'm selling them by the pound. Here That's today. the actual run marbles there. That's correct. And this is the tank wash? This, that yeah, it's a tank to? wash. We had fun with uh, giving away some marbles to some children and uh, selling them at a reasonable price as a show off. Right. So right. But that's yeah. yeah. that's, that's uh, Burmese glass, we think. Yes, we yeah. think. Exactly. Ooh, exactly. Again, Dave McCulloch had a lot to say about the run. He said it was reminiscent of uh, mid Joker runs that they had done with Jabo. Latticinos, Germans, oh, right. all different kinds here. Yeah. Big boy, that's seven yep. eighths there, maybe an inch. And so we're wow. here in the case. Yeah. We got to uh, to meet with and have fun with uh, Sammy Hogue this summer. Oh, these are and, Sammy's. Stuff. And this is right. This is a uh, this is a monster. Beautifully done. His work is magnificent. Uh, this is also one of his. Uh, very different. Right. It's nice there, these two. Yeah. These are all... Uh, all Sammy. Yes. And, again, this is probably, although smaller, my favorite. It's reminiscent it's of a guinea. Of a... Those are Sammy hooks. Oh, they're Sammy. Yep, yep. yep. Can you pop that open? Oh, sure. Oh, you have them there? Absolutely. All right. Oh, He's an amazing, amazing uh, artisan. Definitely. I hope Definitely. he does more runs. This is one of my favorite runs uh, that Dave did. We've all heard of the lawn chair run. This is, this, these are marbles from that run. And they, the reason uh, he, he actually packaged them like this 
was that uh, they, if you look at them closely, there's a lot of lawn chair in them. Aluminum, Aluminum material, right? Aluminum lawn chair that they yeah, threw yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that something? I wonder what the date is on that. I don't know, but you talk about tin, tin toys. Yeah. Um, just to see the, uh, the, the fact that it's got original paint, it's perfect. Mm. Uh, this is in working order. Um, it's really an amazing piece. Great. Yeah, so, so I'm here with Ben Michael, and Ben, you have just started up a new project called the Marvel Universe. Marvel Universe. Marvel Universe. A radio show coming at you the first, third, and fifth Sunday of the month on WESU FM, Westlane University's community radio station. You can hear us online at WESUFM.org where we're streaming. And you can hear our first episode archived and we'll have more to come. And we're talking to Marvel makers, we're talking to Marvel collectors, we're talking to Marvel adventurers, we're talking to people who break the law in search of finding great marbles. And uh, we hope to... Nobody does that! <laughs> as I have... Yeah. Have, uh, awesome. Well, we're all looking forward to it, and thanks for starting up this project for the Marvel, Marvel community. Happy to do it. Ben is not only a radio host and podcast talent, but he has also been quietly honing his craft with making handmade glass marbles. Here's some of his fabulous torch-made contemporaries on display. Most of these have been produced from glass rods, and others are remelts from cullet. Ben is also from a marble playing family. Here's Ben's mom. Did you ever play? You, you did. Because yeah. I lived in the country. And but I mean, didn't everyone play with them? And so much of this is representative of my youth and down to the marble bags, yeah. which we used to make out of Dunbury Licks. It's the hand stitching. Hand stitching. I love that. <laughs> Richie Boniudo. And Richie, you've been doing some digging, have you not? <laughs> what do you have here uh, that you've set up for us? So these are dug items? These are all dug items. Okay. Um, I took my daughter on a trip. Yeah. And we decided we wanted to visit some marble factories, you know, look at the history. We went to 14 different locations. Wow. This was the, the Marble King dump. Probably more uh, around the time of St. Mary's and Baden City. Okay. And then we move over here and we have Ravenswood. Oh, so nice. we were we were able to get down there and, and found their dump and pulled out lots of different examples of Ravenswood. Yeah. You know, kinda I like it because it gives me color. gives me an idea of their colors, you know. Right. It, it it shows Picture some of their light. designs. Fetcher like tile there that they must have been using. Nice. And you you went down here with your daughter, right? Yep. Your daughter is, is that your daughter? My daughter Morgan. Do you have any idea what an honor it would be to be able to dig at Christensen? How was that like digging these? Uh, it, was, it was pretty hard at first because we didn't know exactly where we were digging. Okay. Uh, and then Just sort of feeling around the yeah. property. And then we went to the place where they went. Uh, prior years, and we're able to find stuff there. Oh, right. And this is all pretty much surface finds, right? You didn't yeah, dig deep, um, did you? We probably went most uh, two inches down. And you got tons of collet and, and a marbles. Inside. We went into the original Champion building, and okay. inside there was the back room where the old marble machines were. Yeah. There were the ceiling had fallen a bit, and so it had also crushed parts of the machine. And this was a furnace brick from inside the machine that happened to still be fully intact. That's incredible. This has to be uh, at least a few months of work here. Yeah. Just layers and layers of different runs, right? Yeah. Wow. Did Dad make you hump this back to the truck? Uh, so he didn't know that I grabbed it until after I said Dad unlocked the truck. Because uh, I didn't realize that he had locked it. So you could, all you could hear through the factory was unlock the truck just being <laughs> yelled. Yeah. Clarksburg diggings. Some Caro diggings. These are all Caranobody duck marbles from Richie. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not saying it's an open. I'm saying some cloudy day times. Well, this makes sense, but still, I was able to purchase those. Purchase some brand new, yeah. perfect uh, champions. Those are some of the last of the champion swirls. Right. Champions, baby. We got some Jacksons here. I got huh? some Jacksons. We, I'm gonna have to photograph these. I stopped at the Jackson. We all we walked around the Jackson factory. Okay. And, um, I got to meet the owner of the building. He was a very nice man. Well, we spent nine days down there. So uh, seven of those days we spent traveling around and going to the different factories. And some of them you just you look at and you take a picture. Yeah. Uh, because that's all you can do. It's private yeah. property. Now, what's, what do you, what do you How you doing, see? Bob? <laughs> Good to see you. You brought your stuff. You brought some stuff. Set yeah, up. Good I got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All I grabbed was some cases. Famous Robert Block from Robert Block Auctions. Uh, my, my first marble uh, in 1980. Okay. Uh, the first, uh, actually, the first Northeast marble. Author and auctioneer Robert Block has been auctioning marble since 1989. If you're looking for accurate dollar values on your personal marbles, searching past auction final prices on similar marbles in Block site would give you a great estimation on what you've got. Robert is also the co-founder of the Northeast Marble Meet, founded in 1982, and they've held joint shows with the Nutmeg State Marble Club since 2019. Here's Alfie Bard. Alfie co-founded the Nutmeg State Marbles Club in 2011 with Tony Bannis and Steve Sturks. And this is the inaugural Nutmeg Logo Marble, handcrafted by Sammy Hogue in 2011. Mission to keep alive marble playing and collecting in America forever. Lean into it. Yeah, that was a good shot. You played marbles before. Yeah, you have played, my friend. This is the Mike Close booth coming in from New Hampshire with a massive amount of Christensen swirls, a few turkey heads hiding in there. Some giant German handmaids here, which were probably out of my price range. And an endless spread of acro snakes and high-end Christiansons. Well, what I did pick up from Mike the night before at in-room trading was this parade of studs, including this heartbreaker, dream maker, acro carnelian. Thank you, Mike. He also had a cluster of antique Scottish carpet balls which I believe were made from porcelain. These big balls are relics from an old parlor game called carpet bowling or piggies. And it was similar to curling. This was a very popular sport from the mid 1800s throughout the mid 1900s in Europe. Has marble collecting become cool again on the East Coast? Ask any of these maritime mibsters, and the answer will be a ratifying yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A couple of chalkies. Sweet ones. In the past couple of years, the Northeast Nutmeg Show has played host to Marvel's author and Ellie Alley grandson, Lawrence Edwin Alley III. Come see him in person and get your books personally autographed by the legend. Uh, Will you zoom in on that? Yeah, man. To Craig, who started collecting alley marbles in Maine when he was a kid. That's not true. He told me it was. Shake his hand. What's the first thing I said to you? It's an honor. Did I not say that? How you doing? I'm great. What do we have? We got things for sale? These are marble items. Yeah. Vitro. Yeah. Marble kings. Some nice size marble kings here. Master marbles. There's a swirl marble king. Hard to come by. Where's your best piece for sale? Everyone's oh, wow. been interested in that marble. Yeah, that's a big old nine and tail slag. It's got to be an inch. Inch and a quarter. That's nice. Very good. All right, Jeff. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Hey, what's your name? Jerry Byrne from Rhode Island. Oh, hi, Jerry. Uh, what, are, what are we most proud of that you brought today? Uh, that I brought here today? Yeah. 
It's uh, probably dark. over here. Yeah, see, it's always that way. <laughs> it's in the back, it's right? Yeah, back. it's tucked yeah. away. Right. That's a that's a three thousand dollar marble right there. Good grief. Yeah. Where was this made? This was made around uh, 1850 to 1870. Okay. Where you know where was that? Is that yeah, European? That's in Germany. In Germany. Uh -huh. Okay. It's called a Griner. These are all German. Or that's two thousand dollar marble right there. Is that uh, British? This box is probably about 18 grand. Wow, boy, beautiful collection. Jerry, very nice. Those are all handmade. Box mm -hmm. blood, yeah. They're all ponted. Wow. This one's a $4,000 marble. That is wild. Thank well, you, thank Jerry. you so much for showing us, Jerry. You're not from the IRS, are you? No. What is that, a pelt? It's, no, it's an acro. I think it's a chocolate oh. cow. Well, it's an acro corkscrew. Yeah. Yeah. But cow colors, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this one, I think, is. Yeah, thank you. This one's a bolt called a blood and bones. Blood and bones? Blood and bones, yeah. That's, that's acro? That's acro corkscrew, yeah. Yeah. Like any marble show throughout the country, you'll be sure to meet a room full of knowledgeable vendors paired with engaging collector's conversation. You don't need to spend a penny, but you likely will, and the education will be priceless. Please come again and thank you for watching Vintage Machine Made Marbles.